Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, February 13, 2022. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. The Winter Quarter Study is Justice, Law, History, and we're in Unit 3, Justice and Diversity. This is lesson number two in Unit 3, and the lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is Ezra Seeks God's Law. Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults lesson title is Restoring Law and Order. Our devotional reading, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. The background scripture, Ezra 7, verses 1 through 26. And the print passage is Ezra 7, verses 1 through 10, and verses 23 through 26. Our key verse is the 10th verse of the 7th chapter of Ezra. From the NIV Bible, it reads, For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord, and to teaching his decrees and laws in Israel. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our understanding so that we may learn and live according to your laws every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson introduction. After years of exile in Babylon, Ezra returns to Jerusalem and determines to restore respect for God's law. Study, prayer, and preparation are very important for leaders and teachers of God's word, not just knowing and teaching, but living the word so others can see us putting the word in action. Ezra and Nehemiah were two of the most important leaders in the Bible. They were instrumental in helping to restore the nation of Israel to some sense of its former glory. Ezra was instrumental in helping to restore a deep reverence for and obedience to the law of God. In today's lesson, we see how Ezra prepared himself to teach God's word and how his lifestyle had a positive, lasting impression on others. So, get your Sunday school book. Bible, pen, and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this wonderful lesson. Let's get started. There are three questions for you to consider. Question number one, what was Ezra very well versed in doing? Question number two, what was Ezra called to do in this week's lesson? And question number three, what favor did Ezra receive from God and the king? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. The Israelites were attacked and captured by King Nebuchadnezzar in, of Babylon. The Babylonian army completely destroyed the temple and much of Jerusalem, and the Israelites spent 70 years living in captivity in Babylon. God used Babylon as his agent of judgment against Israel for their sins of idolatry and rebellion against him. King Cyrus, ruler of Persia, defeated Babylon as God had said. As prophesied in scripture, the Jewish people would be allowed to return to Jerusalem after seven years of ex 70 years of exile. King Cyrus allowed the Israelites to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. King Cyrus decreed and supported the Israelites who chose to return to their homeland. There were three migrations of Jews that returned from captivity into Babylon back to Judah and Jerusalem. Zerubbabel led the first migration and he was helpful in rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. Sixty years after completion of the temple, Ezra was commissioned by King Cyrus's successor, King Artaxerxes I, to lead the second migration of Jewish exiles from Babylon back to Jerusalem. Ezra focused his efforts on rebuilding the community and returning the hearts of the people back to the word of God. Nehemiah, a cupbearer, led the third migration and was responsible for rebuilding Jerusalem's wall and other defenses, thus re-fortifying the city. 
Today's lesson, however, focuses on Ezra, who was God's choice to lead the second group of Israelites back to their homeland. Please note, God has made each of us for a specific purpose while on earth. No one else can do what God has chosen you or me to do. That is why we must have a personal relationship with him. We need to know what God's purpose is for us and that we fit into his plan. We don't need to know all the details. We must be willing to trust and believe in his holy plan. Wherever he leads, we must follow. We are not here by happenstance. We all have a purpose. Why don't you tell God, thank you for my purpose? Let's dive into the study of this lesson. This lesson's aims are, for this week, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Number one, understand the historical and spiritual significance of Ezra's return to Jerusalem. Number two, value how God works through various types of people to bring his plan into fruition. And number three, Express thankfulness to those who are the leaders and teachers of God's word. There are two lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is a prepared leader, and we'll find that in Ezra chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. The second outline is a supported leader, and we'll find that in Ezra chapter 7, verses 23 through 26. Outline number one, a prepared leader, Ezra 7, 1 through 10. And it reads thusly, starting with Ezra's Chapter 7, verse 1, it reads, and this is, I'm going to read through verse number 6. After these things, during the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, son of Sariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalem, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Mariath, the son of Zerahiah, the son of Uzi, the son of Buki, the son of Abishua, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher well-versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. The king had granted him everything he asked, for the hand of the Lord, his God, was on him. That was verses 1 through 6. Key point number 1. In verse 1, Ezra is introduced with a lengthy genealogy that covers 16 generations, going back to the time of Aaron, the priest. Ezra was not just anybody. He was able to trace his family tree all the way back to Aaron. How far can you trace your family tree? Can you see down through the generations as we go backward yourself in the generational gap? I could go back four generations in my family. You know, how far back can you go? It is important that we know our heritage. In verse number six, We're given several pieces of biographical information about Ezra. First, he went to Jerusalem from Babylon where he had been born. Second, he was a ready scribe, meaning he was highly educated, able to read and write with proficient skill. Ezra more than likely was tutored by the priests and Levites who were in Babylon among the exiles. Ezra spent a lot of time in the study of God's word. He knew the law and could explain it. His priestly ancestry gave him the authority to teach the law. This brings to mind 2 Timothy 2 and 15, which says, Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because the hand of God was upon the life of Ezra, he gained the respect of the Persian leaders who would have to grant his request. 
His godly character serves as an example for how believers are to live before non-believers. Our lives are to be examples so that those close around us and those we come in contact with will know that we too have been with Jesus Christ, that we are his ambassadors. Key point number two, verses seven through 10. Some of the Israelites, including priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants also came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. He had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the month, and he arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month, for the gracious hand of his God was on him. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. That was verses 7 through 10 from chapter 7 of Ezra from the NIV translation. Ezra was dedicated to studying, living, and teaching the law. Verse 7 states that there were five groups of people who accompanied Ezra to Jerusalem. The priests the Levites, some singers, porters, and temple servants. There were approximately 2,000 people with Ezra leaving Babylon. According to verse 8, the nearly 900-mile journey from Babylon to Jerusalem took about four months. The reason it took so long to make the trip was probably due to extreme heat and men traveling with their families, possessions, and maybe even some elderly parents. Verse 10 tells us three things about the character of Ezra. First, he had set his heart to seek the law of the Lord. Matthew 5 and 6 reminds us, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Ezra had his heart set on seeking and learning the law. Character reference number two, he intended to live out the law of God. He would be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. And in James 1 and 22, the Bible reminds us, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Believers who hear the word of God must receive it with a teachable spirit, applying it to their everyday lives. To hear and not obey is to be deceived. And the third characteristic of of Ezra is his objective was to teach the law to the people of Jerusalem. He would teach them how to live and practice justice in their own cities and towns. My brothers and sisters, while the lesson skips verses 11 through 22, I'd like to read them because it ties into the last verses of our lesson. It is King Artaxerxes' letter of support to Ezra. Listen to what it says, starting with verse number 11. This is a copy of the letter Artaxerxes had given to Ezra the priest, a teacher of the law, a man learned in matters concerning the commands and decrees of the Lord for Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, teacher of the law of the God of heaven. Greetings. Now I decree that any of the Israelites in my kingdom, including priests and Levites, who volunteer to go to Jerusalem with you, may go. You are sent by the king and his seven advisors to inquire about Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, which is in your hand. Moreover, You are to take with you the silver and gold that the king and his advisors have freely given to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem, together with all the silver and gold you may obtain from the province of Babylon, as well as the freewill offerings of the people and priests for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. With this money, be sure to buy bulls, rams, and male lambs, 
together with their grain offerings and drink offerings and sacrifice them on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem. You and your fellow Israelites may then do whatever seems best with the rest of the silver and gold in accordance with the will of your God. Deliver to the God of Jerusalem all the articles entrusted to you for worship in the temple of your God and anything else needed for the temple of your God that you are responsible to supply, you may provide for the, from the royal treasury. Verse 21, Now I, King Artaxerxes, decree that all the treasures of trans-Euphrates are to provide with diligence whatever Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law of God of heaven, may ask of you. Verse 22, Up to... A hundred talents of silver, a hundred cores of wheat, a hundred baths of wine, a hundred baths of olive oil, and salt without limit. So reads verses 11 through 22. So here we see that the king gave his blessings to Ezra and the volunteers who traveled with him and necessary supplies, including silver and gold. Look at God touching the heart of this king. Somebody should shout, won't he do it? Oh yeah, he'll do it for us every time. Let's take a look at outline number two. A supported leader. And we pick this up with verse number 23, or verses 23 through 26. Verse 23 reads, Whatever the God of heaven has prescribed, let it be done with diligence for the temple of the God of heaven. Why should his wrath fall on the realm of the king and his sons? You are also to know that you have no authority to impose taxes, tribute, or duty on any of the priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, temple servants, or other workers at this house of God. Verse 25 and 26. And you, Ezra, in accordance with the wisdom of your God, which you possess, appoint magistrates and judges to administer justice to all the people of Trans-Euphrates, all who know the laws of your God, and you are to teach any who do not know them. Verse 26. Whoever does not obey the law of your God and the law of the king must surely be punished by death, banishment, confiscation of property, or imprisonment. Wow. Key point number one. These verses contain the conclusions of the provisions of the letter issued by King Artaxerxes authorizing his journey to Jerusalem. It authorized Ezra to go to Jerusalem to address any matters that related to the house of the Lord and the local civil government. The king's decree stipulated that everything possible was to be done so that the wrath of God would not come upon him or his son. Key point number two. The provisions in verse 26 eliminated the levying of any taxes against the workers of the temple the priests, the Levites, the singers, porters, and temple servants. Ezra was also authorized to select and appoint magistrates and judges for the sole purpose of ensuring that justice was executed fairly and with equity throughout the land. These justices had to be knowledgeable of the law of Moses, and they were authorized to judge all the people west of the Euphrates River. Ezra's role extended to teaching the law to those who were ignorant of its provision. Finally, in an extraordinary statement, the king gave Ezra the authority to enforce not only the law of God, but also the laws of the king. He had religious and civil authority, and those who failed to obey the law would face one of three possible forms of punishment, death, banishment, or the total confiscation of all of their personal and private property. Ezra was given a lot of authority to enforce the laws of God and the laws of the king. This is a man of high integrity and apparently trusted by both believers and non-believers. 
His lifestyle speaks volumes for one who truly dedicates him or herself to the study and doing of God's word. Ezra's character found favor in both God and man. Ask yourself, my lifestyle, the way that I live, the way that I go about my daily activities, my character, am I finding favor in both God and man? Sometimes we find favor in, with man, but we don't have favor with God. But I would rather have favor with God than man. And it's even better when it's favor with God and man. How do you stack up? In summary, leaders and teachers of God's word must teach the word with accuracy understanding and authority, but most importantly, serve as living examples of its principles. Revelation 22 and 14 says, and I quote, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. And I put in parenthesis, city called heaven, end quote. Today's church and every spiritual leader must realize that there is nothing more important than the assurance that God's gracious hand is upon them and leading them to accomplish his will. The teaching and preaching of the gospel have the power to transform lives, communities, and entire nations. There is life-changing power in the word of God. In closing, my brothers and sisters, the song that comes to mind is, I want to live so God can use me anywhere and anytime. I want to walk so God can use me anywhere and anytime. I want to pray so God can use me anywhere and anytime. And that's what Ezra did, and this lesson shows us how God opens doors for us when we do what he has assigned us to do. We don't need to know all the details, all the ins and outs, but we just need to trust the one who holds tomorrow. The song says, I don't know about tomorrow, but I'm so glad I know who holds tomorrow, and he is holding my hand. When we ask God to lead and guide us, we will not go astray, for if, we, if he leads us, we cannot stray. That's why the song said, Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So my brothers and sisters, we need to walk by faith, not by sight. Trust God. If you love him, you will trust him. If you don't trust him, you won't be able to follow him. You will always have a doubt in your mind. But trust God, knowing that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. That's our lesson for today. I hope you've gotten a thought. I hope something was said that will help you look at your life and be sure you are like Ezra, that you were chosen by God for a specific assignment and that you want to give it all that you have to be the very best that you can be to carry out God's plan for your life. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this lesson. Please help us to understand and realize that if we would just keep it and keep it simple to do what you have purposed for us while on this earth, we will reap blessings and favor beyond what we can imagine or think. Keep us with willing hearts and made up minds to do your will, not sometime, but all the time, every day of our lives. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Enjoy your day.